Hello everyone, it's my pleasure to present to you my IBM Coursera Advanced Data Science Capstone on Wine Reviews. Let's jump into the stakeholders' presentation. These data sets are comprised of approximately 120 thousands of columns of wine description and details from Kaggle Data Science which comprise of 14 features. With this data set, we can fully understand the details and statistics from the data set, which can be further utilized for sales optimization. I'm going to build a wine classifier based on the description given. As you can see from this slide, we can convert the review description to classify them into what, kind, what type of wine based on our algorithm. The main algorithm we're going to use for wine classifier is SGBoost, Bidirectional, LSTM, and CNN. Overall, SGBoost performs with best accuracy. Here comes my peers' presentation. Alright, as I mentioned above, there are 120 thousands of columns of data with 14 features. They are well defined, but of course, there are some missing value inside, so we are going to deal with it. So we are going to use the description and variety from this data set for wine classifier algorithm. So a little bit assessment of the data quality. As you can see from this graph, there's a missing value from designation, from, from regions, and taste name, which we're going to deal with it later. Let's explore a little bit about the price of the wine. As you can see from this graph, there are a few outliers that is extremely outside of the, the distribution of the price. So we need to remove this outlier in order to get the true distribution of the wine price. So after we using Minmax Scalar to remove the outlier which is which have the Z score of larger than three, we can see from this uh, visco box that uh, the the price the distribution of the wine price. A little bit about the points uh, overall, there is a value distribution between 80 to 100 points, so uh, it's vastly between the 85 to 95 points range. Uh, from this graph, US, France, and Italy have a larger distribution in the data set. So, a little bit about the binary variety, uh, there have been uh, almost around 0 to 30. And th th of course, there are some outliers in the winery variety, but mostly distributed um, less than 50. Uh, from the title column in this data set, I have successfully extracted year from title using regular expression library. So this graph show the average point for each year, which uh, I would say that uh, they record uh, significantly a not uh, a slightly higher points uh, around 1940 to 1960 uh, as compared to 21st century. Perhaps a normalized point which using one hot encoding would uh, better visualize it because the points are mainly comprised in the range of 80 to 100. So I have uh, converted the point which is in the range of 80 to 100 into 0 to 1 which can better visualize. Uh, the distribution of point for you. Uh, I apologize that uh, there's a mislabel of the price and point which uh, I, I put it upside down. But overall, you can see that uh, the, the price, the higher the price did, didn't necessarily means that it will ensure a higher points for the wine. As you can see from the X axis that uh, the the wine which has a price that more than three thousand uh, dollars, it has a point that which around eighty seven point five, which is not super good, as compared to some uh, cheap wine that have that is very cheap but it able to achieve a high point. Uh, again, uh, the label is misclassified, which the point should be the price and vice versa for the price. Uh, from the previous graph, uh, there's been some quite some outliers which I don't like it because it may uh, clearly affect the, the graph. So 
I have I have filtered out the wine price which I just left out those which is less than 100 as we can see uh, I would say that it's a weight relationship which is positive that uh, the higher the price the higher the points for those wine price that's less than 100 a little bit about the relationship between the countries and normalized price uh, sorry points so uh, England have scored the highest normalized points as compared to others but uh, we, we couldn't conclude that England have have just had the best wine because uh, England have a relatively small data set as compared to those big countries like US Italy so we couldn't just conclude England have the best wine among the countries because England is outliers. So from this graph, we can see that the top three wine variety in this data set, which is Pinot Noise, Chardonnay, and Chabonnet Sauvignon. So I've run the word cloud for the description for wine. So from this from this word cloud, we can see that uh, the mostly Describe words in the descriptions uh, those common words such as flavor, wines, drink now, aromas, acidities. Uh, sometimes it's mentioned from this graph. So, as I mentioned previously, uh, these are some algorithms that I use to, for the wine classifier, which is the extreme boosting the convolution of neural networks and the bidirectional LSTM. Uh, convolution of neural network have performed quite similarly with bidirectional LSTM, so I would not further illustrate the bidirectional LSTM in the further on, which I will uh, mainly focus on the description on the deep learning model, which is CNN, and the non-deep learning model, which is the extreme boosting. So I have converted the description into the sequence of integers using tokenizer and put it into the data frame to be learned. So I have set a maximum sequence of 128. So there's the X of the extreme boosting is comprised of 128 columns. So for Y I have convert I have because there are quite a variety of Ys uh, that are considered as a min minimal outliers so I have convert the rare wines into others and convert them into a wine label using tokenizer so there are totally 21 white labels. So these are some hyperparameters from the extreme boosting. Uh, I use cross validation to to fine tuning the hybrid parameters in extreme boosting, mainly in the max depth and minimum child weight and gamma, because uh, these hybrid parameters is uh, will affect will affect the models more compared to other fine tuned hybrid parameters. So I use accuracy score from Xcalon to evaluate this model. Uh, according to the documentation from Xcalon, it says that accuracy classification score uh, it means that in multi-label classification, it computes the subset accuracy which the set of label predicted. For example, must exactly match the corresponding set of label in uh, the, the true Y label. So, uh, after uh, approximately an hour of model uh, I, after I running the model for approximately an hour I able to achieve quite quite surprising good accuracy which is 99.99% uh, but I'm quite worried about the overfitting problem because uh, I didn't really split the data because I, I trained the data using cross validation which uh, it could be a problem so I should use other wine description that uh, that that's not in the data set to test the, this model to ensure that this model is not overfitting. Uh, so let's talk about uh, my deep learning model, which is convolution neural network. So uh, basically, I use the same the same thing from uh, the previous one 
which is from the uh, the, the the boosting method. So uh, for X, I just convert the description into a sequence of integral using tokenizer because uh, this model only only you can only read the integral. So uh, basically the same thing. So I just uh, establish a relatively simple layers for CNN. So I just add an embedding layers in in my first layer, so I add my first convolutional one-dimensional layers with the max pooling layers, and then I just uh, adding two dense layer, which uh, I put a soft max activation in the last dense layer. So uh, this is a relatively easy one to train, as compared to the previous uh, extreme gradient boosting method. In fact, I just use like one to two minutes to train this relatively simple model. So for training and validation loss, uh, as you can see, uh, it's clearly overfitting now. As, uh, as the training loss get smaller among the epoch, uh, the validation loss uh, apparently has increased after some training iteration, which is not good. So I use uh, Adam to optimize this model, which uh, I use past categorical cross entropy to compute the loss. So uh, I use accuracy as a matrix to evaluate this uh, convolution the neural network model. I would say uh, it is quite in impressive uh, to get like 96, like almost 97% of accuracy in testing data which I just built this model in just one to two minutes, which is quite good. But uh, the validation accuracy is not so good, which is around 67% of accuracy. Yeah, I could uh, improve this model by better hyperparameters tuning mm -hmm. or make uh, mm -hmm. some layers, uh, uh, building some even more layers in this deep learning model. So some testing, uh, this is a review that I get from the web. So in order to correctly predict the wine. So uh, in fact, this wine is actually uh, the cabinet France, which is, uh, which is wrongly classified by my algorithm, which uh, I would say the first and second wine is actually quite similar, but uh, as I say, my models can be uh, can definitely better tuning with some hyperparameters tuning and more layers. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, extreme boosting has achieved a great result in terms of accuracy, but uh, I would likely to test on other data uh, that is not trained by this model in order to validate the true accuracy to determine that it is not overfitting. Uh, for my deep learning model, which is convolution the neural network, it can be further improved with hyperparameter tuning and some layers modification. Uh, in fact, I require I, I need a, a better understanding in NLP2 in terms of tokenizer, stemming, labelization, because I found that I didn't really pre-processing my work pretty well in the beginning. So I, I should I should do a better job in that the a natural language processing in order to improve my model correction. So thank you guys.